This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thanks so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and productive day. And in the news this morning for January 17, 2023, man stabbed to death outside a St. Anne nightclub identified. A man who was stabbed to death during an altercation in the vicinity of an exotic nightclub in Runaway Bay, St. Anne on Monday morning has been identified. The deceased is Christopher Raymond of a Mount Edgecombe address in the parish. Police report that Raymond and the three other men were stabbed during the altercation at around 4 a.m. It is reported that the men were stabbed following a dispute outside of the club. Sources have informed the news that the security guard at the nightclub was among the wounded men. It's reported that Raymond and the two other men got into an altercation with the security guard and the knives came into play. When the brawl ended, Raymond was fatally stabbed and the security guard with the other two men were wounded. Police have not yet ascertained the nature of the dispute. Nephew still on the run after graveyard killing in St. Mary. The St. Mary police are still searching for the nephew of 60-year-old Marvin Watson, who allegedly stabbed the elderly man to death on Sunday as the family gathered for a funeral. The five-year-old daughter of the man now on the run was being buried when, according to the news sources, a long-running dispute between the two men spilled over into yet another argument. According to the police, a knife was used to stab the Watson in his chest. He was rushed to the Port Maria Hospital, where he died while undergoing treatment. His 37-year-old nephew, police said, fled the scene. Two die in motorcycle crash. Councillor Christopher Williams of the Jamaica Labour Party, Santa Cruz Division, says he is concerned about the blatant disregard for road safety in the south central town following a motorcycle crash which claimed the lives of two men early Monday. I have noticed, especially at night, that some motorcyclists and the truck drivers are of the view that Main Street Santa Cruz is a highway. I am urging the police to be on the lookout for them and to give them what the law prescribes, he told the news on Monday. His comments came hours after police reported that about 1.30 a.m., the two men died after the motorcycle on which they were traveling crashed into a wall on Main Street in Santa Cruz. A police source named one of the men as Tia Roden. Up to mid-afternoon on Monday, the other man's identity had not been released. It is very sad to wake up and hear of the tragic demise of the young men in Santa Cruz, said Williams. I implore people traveling on motorcycles, driver and pillion, that it is very important to have on the necessary protective gear like your helmet. There have been a number of accidents involving motorcyclists in St. Elizabeth. It is widespread across Jamaica, and in many instances, there are fatalities. With the new Road Traffic Act taking effect in February, I am reminding all motorists to be very mindful and cautious so as not to be in breach, said Williams. OCA says it investigated increased the cases of child abuse in 2022. The Office of the Children's Advocate says that last year, it investigated and increased the number of child abuse cases and other forms of physical violence against the children. Children's Advocate Dan Gordon Harrison says that more than 300 cases of sexual abuse, physical abuse and child neglect were investigated by her office in 2022. She says that this is a worrying trend, especially because there had been a fall-off in cases in 2020. Most of the cases investigated in 2022 were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew and St. Catherine. Data provided by the OCA showed that neglect of duty accounted for 117 of the cases investigated, making it the largest category of cases reported to the agency. The second largest category was for physical abuse, with 97 cases or 31%. Most of these investigations relate to complaints against the relevant authorities, such as government entities and or their representatives. Mrs. Gordon Harrison disclosed that the OCA's legal department, which works closely with its investigators, inspections and the compliance unit, dealt with approximately 400 cases involving children 
in 2022. These included providing legal representation for children who are before the court in criminal matters, appearing in civil matters on behalf of children, as well as a custody and a guardianship applications. The Children's Advocate told the news that the Safe Spot Helpline, established to help children in distress, received almost 1,800 calls from April to December last year. The Office of the Children's Advocate saw a resurgence of numbers in the types of cases and the numbers of cases that we had to be dealing with. As you know, there was a fall off in 2020, and though things picked up again in 2021 compared to 2020, they have been surpassed when we look back at what happened in 2022. Uh, for the first three quarters, for example, of 2022, that's from January through to September, we had 311 cases that were received for investigations, and then another 400 that our legal department had to contend with. Some of the major issues, of course, included different types of violence against children that ran the full spectrum, emotional, physical, psychological. And then there was the issue as well of mental health featuring very greatly. We received through Safe Spot, for example, almost 1,800 contacts for, uh, for, for the period April to December 2022 which really tells us that our children are having issues that they want to talk about and issues that they need guidance on. Going forward for 2023, well, we intend to continue providing direct support to children in terms of counseling services, listening air services, and guidance to them through Safe Spot. We also intend to do meaningful investigations because we are very passionate about accountability frameworks. So it's about ensuring that the systems that are in place are operating in the way that they should and really supporting through training and capacity building as well. But if it is that all of those efforts fail, then of course accountability has to come into the mix so that people understand that children are not only to be protected in word, but in actuality. Trauma cases and the lifestyle illnesses could overburden health system, says Tufton. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is warning that the country's health care system faces the risk of being overburdened by the treatment of victims of violence as well as those seeking care for lifestyle diseases. Dr. Tufton wants Jamaicans to take personal responsibility for their health and to find amicable ways of dealing with the conflicts. The health minister raised the concern about the growing number of trauma cases in hospitals across the island, saying emergency care services are stretched. He pointed to statistics in the Southern Regional Health Authority, which showed that there were 173,456 accident and emergency visits, with an additional 2,666 motor vehicle accidents last year. Some 4,816 patients visited trauma-related centers, while 244 cases were for gunshot wounds. Dr. Tufton warned that despite the ministry's best efforts, it will be challenging to meet the growing demands if the current trend continues. And as for the statistics in the southern region around emergency response and emergency care and the need for it, and I am told that in the last year, Southern Regional Health Authority recorded over 173,456 in accident and emergency visits. 173,456. With an additional 2,666 motor vehicle accidents. 4,816 patients visited the trauma-related centers, accident and emergency, and 244 gunshot wounds now this is statistic that's worth mulling over we can't build enough hospitals buy enough ambulances hire enough nurses to deal with people who are intent on settling their disputes by using a machete a pickaxe a fork a piece of stick a knife or worse a gun and it happens every single day so what is really challenging is that as a society in public health we have a duty to respond 
to every need part of our fiduciary responsibility. And so if we are bent on a society and decide that deviant behavior is going to be a critical characteristic of our societal values and norms, then we're not going to be able to meet that kind of thing. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.